This is Sharon Wilson. She's pretty awesome. You'll see why. Long ago, in the time before TikTok, we were dancing to Gundam style. We were watching the Hunger Games and surviving the end of the Mayan calendar while standing in line for an iPhone 5. Back in the times when Donald Trump was still a Democrat. Atmospheric methane levels shot up to 1,819 parts per billion. That may not sound like a big deal, but it is. That's because methane is a greenhouse gas 80 times more powerful at warming the climate than carbon dioxide. It is the second largest contributor to global warming after carbon dioxide. Methane has accelerated climate change. But something else was happening in 2012. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, aka TCEQ, took this official optical gas imaging video of methane blasting from an oil facility operated by Marathon Oil Corporation in South Texas. Optical gas imaging cameras make climate pollution that is invisible, visible. What looks like smoke is really oil and gas pollution. That includes volatile organic compounds, which harm health, and methane, which harms the climate. One year later, in 2013, TCEQ took another video of Marathon Oil continuing to dump methane into our air. That's like noticing your faucet is running and just shrugging it off. Then it was 2014 when Taylor Swift blessed us with 1989, and this is where Sharon comes in. That was the year she got certified as an optical gas imaging thermographer. That meant she could go straight to that Marathon Oil site and record video of the facility releasing methane into the air herself. And that's exactly what she did. On March 6 and 7th in 2014, she recorded a massive methane release that ended up causing a spike in hydrocarbon pollution at a state of Texas air monitor 22 miles away. I mean, it was epic. She called the TCEQ to report this event, but they wouldn't come to check it out because she was living in Dallas, not Carnes County where it happened. That part ended up in Rolling Stone. What didn't end up in Rolling Stone was how Marathon's Pollution Marathon was impacting their unfortunate neighbors, Mike and Myra Cerny. There's just always smoke out here. It smells and smells horrible. Nosebleeds all the time because of the stuff in the middle of the night and all this stuff. And I know that it's poisoning the air and they act like nothing's going on. In 2015, 196 parties reached the Paris Agreement, a legally binding international treaty on climate change. Ironically, Congress overturned the decades-old crude oil export ban, which allowed drilling to start booming in the Permian Basin. Pokemon Go took over summer of 2016, while the Obama Administration Environmental Protection Agency unveiled new historic methane rules. Meanwhile, Marathon installed vapor recovery units, equipment meant to prevent pollution from tanks. Sharon kept going back there, and Marathon Oil kept dumping methane into our atmosphere. She continued visiting the Marathon site year after year. In 2017, even as Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement, rolled back Obama's methane rules, and methane levels were over 1,850 parts per billion, she kept making complaints to the TCEQ, letting them know about Marathon's pollution marathon. Yeah, nothing changed. In 2018, NASA confirmed that the methane spike is tied to, wait for it, oil and gas. Even during a global pandemic, during Trump's impeachment, while Australia burned and Harry and Meghan quit the royal family. We lost RGB, and George Floyd was murdered. Marathon's Pollution Marathon continues. She was there again in June 2022. Sharon made 15 visits to this one site and submitted 10 complaints. Nothing has changed. Atmospheric methane levels continue to climb, and Marathon's Pollution Marathon is contributing to the acceleration of climate change and causing global impact. After 10 years, we have learned that citizen complaints make no difference, TCEQ enforcement actions make no difference, best available control technology makes no difference, this one marathon site is representative of oil and gas sites all across the U.S. and in other countries. We can't wait any longer. We can have oil and gas, or we can have a future, but we can't have both. What's that old saying about not being able to have nice things? Like, a future sounds pretty nice. People in power want us to think change is impossible, that there is a gridlock in Congress, so boo-hoo, we can't do anything. They're wrong. President Joe Biden has the power to declare a national climate emergency and enact powerful change using executive orders. 
Trump used his powers to undo Obama's climate change efforts. So obviously, President Biden should use his federally granted authority to save our future. That's a lot of power. It's time for him to use it.